Hello and welcome to Archie Corner. This is episode number 11. Today we will continue the subject of egress. Specifically, we're going to be talking about egress widths. There are various items that the widths apply to, but in this video we're only going to focus on a few things. We are going to talk about the egress widths for stairs, doors, and corridors. So let's get started. Normally, on any given floor, you have two stairways and also a corridor or hallway that connects the two together for access. Additionally, each stairway has an access door. The question is, how wide should these items be? There are two provisions for widths. One is based on the occupant load and another is based on a minimum width requirement. Minimum widths need to be met at all times, but they should never be less than that which is required by your occupancy loads. Let's look at some examples. Let's start with stairs. First, let's look at the minimums required which can be found on IBC section 1011.2, which notes that the widths must be a minimum of 44 inches. Now, let's check the minimum required width based on occupancy load. To provide the answer, you will first need the total occupant load for the floor. My last video explains the basics of calculating the width for a suite. A link to that video will be posted at the end of this video and also in the description below. But for the sake of this example, let's assume that you have three suites in this floor and each floor has the following occupant loads. One suite has 100 occupants, the other has 120 occupants, the other has 90 occupants for a total of 310 total occupants on the floor. Per IVC section 1005.3.1, you must provide 0.3 inches of width per occupant. This means that you need a total of 310 occupants times 0.3 inches, which equals a total of 93 inches. In this example, we have two stairs, which is normally the minimum number of stairs you need for a floor. Therefore, if we take the 93 inches and we divide them by two because there's two stairways, we are required for each stairway to be 46.5 inches wide minimum. Again, it's important to note that these are minimums. This occupant load is greater than the minimum we discussed earlier. 46.5 inches is greater than 44 inches. And so our width based on occupancy is what we need to use since it is the most stringent requirement of the two. So that is how wide our stairs have to be minimum. Then, what about the doors that lead into the stairways? Well, first let's see what the code states as minimum for doors. This can be found on IBC section 1010.1.1, which notes that a door may not provide less than 32 inches clear width. Now let's see what we need based on occupancy loads. We can find this number under other components, which is in the IBC 1005.3.2. When we look at this section, we see that the requirement is to provide 0.2 inches per each occupant. Again, you need the total occupants, which as we discussed earlier, this floor had a total of 310 occupants. The calculation would be 310 occupants times 0.2 inches equals 62 inches. And again, since we have two stairways and therefore one door into each stairway, we can say that we have 62 inches divided by two equals 31 inches. Having this in mind, each door must provide a minimum of 31 inches clear width. Now, this is less than our minimum that we talked about earlier in section 1010.1.1. In this instance, it's not the occupancy load that governs, but the minimum that we found earlier. Therefore, even though the occupancy load states we can use 31 inches, we need to provide the minimum, which is 32 inch clear width. Something to note really quick is that door width clearances are not the same as door width sizes. A door width may not necessarily provide the clearance. For example, a door that is 36 inches wide will typically provide 32 inch clear when it's in open position. Now what about the corridors? Well, once again, let's start with the minimum widths required by the code for corridors. 
This can be found in IBC section 1020.1.2, which in turn has a table. Now you have to figure out what type of use you're giving your floor, but in our example, this floor is used for office. Based on the table, we need a minimum of 44 inches clear for our corridor. Now let's proceed to calculate the required width based on occupant load. The occupant load factor also falls under the same exact section as the doors, which is the other components section in IBC 1005.3.2. That code states that we need 0.2 inches per occupant and we've already assessed that the calculation is 310 occupants times 0.2 inches equals 62 inches minimum. Since this is a single corridor however and this is used by all the occupants to access the exits the width of the corridor will have to be the full 62 inches and not split in half. The most stringent requirement in this case would be the minimum width required for corridors based on occupancy load. And that my friends are the basics of egress widths. As with all codes, there are exceptions and special circumstances that may provide different requirements. Nevertheless, I hope you like this video. As always, I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope it helped you. Here are a couple more videos that might give you more information. The one on the left talks about occupancy loads and how to calculate them. And the one on the right talks about door clearances. If this video helped you, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe. But for now, this is Archie Corner signing out.